Uh, what we want to explain is how come acids will undergo nucleophilic substitution reaction. Why not addition? By right, it should undergo addition reaction just like carbonyl compound. The reactive species, I think it is fine. All right, my carbon, it is delta positive charge, so therefore it will attract a nucleophile. Very consistent. If I'm positively charged, I will react with nucleophiles, negative things. If I'm negatively charged, I will react with positive things. I will react with electrophile. So consistently in organic chem, we see that. Uh, what is interesting is this carbon by right, it is unsaturated. It should take part in addition reaction just like carbonyl compound, but it doesn't, right? It prefers substitution. So why is that the case? Uh, later, it turns out that because the addition product is not very stable, so therefore you prefer a substitution reaction. So the substitution is easy. I just replace your Y with a nucleophile. And if I look at the mechanism, which again, uh, we have explicitly mentioned here, it is not required in syllabus, but we just want to appreciate that. What is interesting is you look at the first step involving this guy here, where the nucleophile attacks to my acid carbon, pi bond opens up, both electrons go to oxygen, and we form this intermediate. Doesn't this look exactly the same as the nucleophilic addition of my carbonyl compound? It looks exactly the same. All right, the nitrile, attack my carbonyl carbon, the pi bond opens up, both electrons go to oxygen, I form this intermediate. So now you notice, uh, actually it is still true that my carbon, it is delta positive charge, it is reacting with a nucleophile, same for both instances, and my carbon is unsaturated in both instances, so therefore they undergo addition reaction. You notice, uh, both of them, actually the mechanism is exactly the same, both of them do undergo addition reaction, exactly the same. But the issue is, once the product is formed, stability is different, so therefore they choose to do different things, all right? Involving carbonyl carbon, because this carbonyl carbon feels that I'm relatively stable, I'm only attached to one electronegative oxygen at the beginning. Nitrile comes in, if I count nitrile as an electronegative species, now this carbon is only attached to two electronegative things. So with respect to carbon, carbon feels that, okay, I'm relatively stable, I'm quite okay with this being saturated. So now the unstable guy is the O minus. So what this O minus will do is O minus will pick up a proton in the third step, and then that will be forming my cyanohydrin as the product, the nucleophilic addition of carbonyl compound. Correct? But for acid carbon, you notice uh, acid carbon is already attached to one electronegative oxygen. Why is also electronegative? Because it is either a chloro group or a nitrogen or another oxygen. So this carbon is already attached to two electronegative things and another electronegative species comes in. Now this carbon says that, okay, I'm not stable. I'm attached to too many electronegative species. So if I just continue to stay saturated, then I'll be very positive and therefore I'll be unstable. So what I prefer to do is I want to kick out one of the electronegative groups. I don't want to be attached to too many electronegative things. So you notice the consideration for acid carbon and carbonyl carbon is different because of their stability. But this step and this step, you notice, uh, hopefully we can see that the pattern is exactly the same. All right, the nucleophile attacks the carbon, the pi bond opens up. This carbon actually undergoes addition reaction, but depending on the stability for this intermediate versus the other intermediate, carbonyl compound carbon choose to stay as it is, the O- minus picks up a proton somewhere else, but the acid carbon prefers to kick out one group because it doesn't like to be attached to too many electronegative things. And that is the reason why it undergoes a substitution reaction. So it's effectively, you add in a group and then you eliminate another group. Okay? So I think, again, it's good to appreciate that. And hopefully we can see that, hey, this two, essentially the, the mechanism involving my carboxylic acids and the addition reaction of my carbonyl compound is actually very, very similar.